It's important to remember that while you might not serve a parental role in the traditional sense to a donor-conceived person, you are still a genetic parent to them, and your children, or future children, are also that donor-conceived person's half-genetic siblings. Also remember that a donor-conceived person's future children will also be your genetic grandchildren. My husband supports me to go through the donation. I told him when I first contacted the agency. Throughout the process, I was open to him, what they told me. And they'll, he also asked me to ask them questions so he can be comfortable too, knowing that I'll be safe going through. I started dating my current husband around the same time as I started my first egg donation. We had just met and I was essentially like, by the way, I'm, I'm going to go be an egg donor. And fortunately, he's been very supportive throughout all of it. He's helped with my medications. He's helped with going to appointments. And so we've been really open. I've talked to my, um, my husband about the fact that there are these children who are directly related to our own child and that in the next 10, 15, 20 years that they may be um, contacting us. Talking about my egg donation, um, my egg donations with my partner, I've kind of had to, um, you know, consider the fact that they're also raising a child that has genetic half siblings out there. So their role um, in parenting our daughter is still kind of complex in that sense. Um, my partner has been incredibly supportive and understands that a good chunk of my time in terms of communicating with the other families is incredibly important to me and to my daughter and how our family functions. Um, I definitely think it's important for your partner to be on board with how you introduce that information to your own children and how you connect with the recipient families. Did my first donation and then met my now husband. We've been uh, together now 23 years. And now, I didn't do the subsequent donations at that time yet. So, and so when I explained it to him and kind of explained the process and all of that, he was like, if this is what you want to do, I'll support you. And he did. And he's been my champion ever since. You have to give your partner the time to process this as well. You know, just as you had to take the time to process and educate yourself and learn and be comfortable with it, you have to give your partner that same grace. And because again, this could also affect their life for a lifetime. That donor conceived person that's coming is going to be, you know, a sibling or have the same DNA as their child. And so you have to be able to give them that ability to be able to understand, to be able to educate themselves or you educate them so that they know what the process is. And then they also may be fearing, you know, for you. Are you going to be okay? What do you mean you have to take all these hormones? What is the long-term effect? How is that going to affect you? Are you going to be emotionally prepared to take that on? And again, you have to be able to answer these questions for them and address the concerns that they have because it is rightfully so that they would have those questions. It's extremely important to me that egg donors tell their partners that they were an egg donor because that information is likely to come out eventually and you don't want it to be a, a surprise or a shock to your partner or your family. So I think it's important to have those conversations early on, maybe not the first date, um, but as it starts to get serious. If you were a donor and you haven't told your partner about the egg donations, it may be time to do that. It's likely to come out eventually. And if you have a family and it, and it comes as a surprise, you know, that could be really disruptive to your own family. And so it's important that you have those conversations before the child makes contact. If you're having any difficulty figuring out how to have those conversations, I would recommend bringing into a mental health professional who could talk through uh, the egg donation and disclosure to your partner. There have been so many cases of marriages falling apart because somebody donated and the partner didn't know. And all of a sudden, there's this biological kid that nobody ever knew existed, and it puts such a rift in those relationships. So just always be open. Always, 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 always. If I ever had children, I think it's important for me to tell them that I had, um, I didn't donate, I did donate. 
my eggs. It's absolutely important that you consider the fact that the children who result from the donation will be genetically related to any children you may have in the future and the feelings that your own children may have about that. You know, with my own child, my child's a baby. He's met two of his genetic half siblings, um, but eventually we're going to have to have the conversation about how there are more. And I think it's really important that he's aware of that especially when he grows up and he starts dating, you should be aware that there are people who are genetically related to him who he does not know at this time. If you were an egg donor and you haven't told your own children about it, it may be time to broach those topics with your child. Instead of them finding out later by accident that they have genetically related siblings, it's best if it comes from you. I know that they often tell recipients how to bring it up to their donor conceived children. And I thought it was interesting that I should bring it up the same way to my own daughter. So mostly I just talked to her about it in a very like developmentally appropriate way, just the very basics right now about being able to help another family, have another baby, um, kind of talking about it in the terms of like a half sibling so that she knows that the way that I'm talking about it, it's a genetic connection to her. And my plan is to kind of just introduce more and more information um, as age appropriate from here on out. And also involve her in like the conversations, the video calls, the phone calls with my recipients and their children. I know that my half siblings that were raised by my bio mom did not know about us until this last year because she had never told them. She didn't know that it resulted in pregnancy. So I feel like first, knowing that offspring exists and then having that conversation, I feel it could be the most important. I also had conversations with my family about the fact that I was planning to donate and I wanted to make sure that I had their, um, their blessing as well. Initially, my half sister contacted a first cousin who then reached out to her, but so I don't think the extended family knew so I feel like being very careful with how you communicate with the extended family. I feel like with extended family, I mean, I feel like it's really on a case by case basis just because you don't know the relationship of anybody with their extended family. But again, because of genetic testing being so common, it's not really easy to hide anymore if you do it. So I'd say, be prepared for if you keep it a secret for more of your extended family that it might not be a secret for much longer my background is a little bit unique because i am from japan and in my country egg donation is not as common as it is here in the states and um cultural background um, our perspective is a little different as well. So it was, uh, it was unique to share that with my family and um, to, to know the difference too. At first, I wasn't sure if I wanted to tell them just because of that um, a stigma, the, the cultural difference that I mentioned, I was not sure how they would take that I decided to be an egg donor, but I needed to because I needed to know my grand grandparents' health background. <laughs> so um, I decided to tell them um, they were surprised at first, and they also didn't know anything about egg donation. So they asked a lot of questions, as far as it was safe for me to go through. Um, but eventually they did understand and respected my decision to be an donor. It made me feel um, lighter, uh, relieved that they know, you know, what I, what I do and how I think about certain things. I do think there are a lot of donors who can relate to the stigma, cultural stigma. I would say to somebody who's in similar position as I am, to trust your relationship with your family, not so much what other people think or what the 
you know, cultural stigma is. So I hope that they feel comfortable enough to tell their families or loved ones, somebody who close to you. And I think that would make them feel better eventually. My family is, um, they're African. We, my family comes from Cape Verde, which is off the West Coast of Africa. And my generation is the first generation born here. When I told my mom that I wanted to be an egg donor, she was like, what in the world is that? She had no idea, no concept. And for many, that could very well be the case. So it's not just about the person who wants to be an egg donor to be educating. It's about society also being open to the idea. It's about the egg donor being willing to share the information. It's about the professionals in the industry also being willing and open to sharing um, and educating the masses. I have a great relationship with my supervisors at my work. So they are very open for me to take days off um, because two of my donations were uh, trouble. So I had to go away a week or so. Make sure you have a great support system around you. So if you are all alone trying to do go through the process all by yourself, I would not recommend. I did not listen to my own advice at the time and I went at it pretty alone. I think part of that was because I was ashamed of what I was doing and I didn't want anybody to know. So the only people who knew that I was doing it and who were in any position to really counsel me were the medical professionals at the hospital. Tell close friends, tell forums, reach out to we are egg donors, do something to let people know because if you go it alone you have no idea what you're doing and you could just put yourself in such a vulnerable scary position.